Dear student, welcome to the class of mobile computing. Today we will discuss about the host mobility, that how a host can move from one location to another location. In last lecture, we had discussion about handoff procedure that take place in a mobile ad hoc network. And similarly, we had discussion about some problem <clears throat> that exist uh, in these network that is the hidden terminal problem and exposed terminal problem. And uh, to resolve these issues, uh, we had uh, MECA protocol that is used to address the hidden terminal problem and uh, exposed terminal problem. Later on, we have some discussion about uh, energy management and power management in these nodes, that uh, which mode is used to utilize the maximum energy and how we can increase the network lifetime by scheduling our nodes. So in today's lecture, we will have discussion about the host mobility. And here you can see that we have a different degrees of uh, user mobility that where you are moving from which location to which location and how much actually it will affect your connectivity uh, with the backbone network or with the direct uh, point with access point with which you are connected. Mm, so here we have when you are moving only within the same access network as in the last example it was, uh, there is single access point and therefore your connectivity will remain the same, mobility is irrelevant and uh, the multi access point uh, only link layer by layer changes, uh, but the underlying infrastructure of these network is same. If you have a look to the last lecture we have yesterday, then you can see here in this diagram that uh, here in this diagram, you can see that only the access point of host one is changed. He is transferred from access point one to access point two. The connectivity is provided by access point two, but the underlying network, the switch and the router infrastructure still remain the same. So same thing is explained here in uh, this slide as well that how much your connectivity is and how it affect your overall uh, process uh, of mobility. You uh, look at this, uh, sometime if you are even moving uh, within the domain of that access point, then you are mobile uh, in that particular region, but you are not changing your access point, neither you are changing your uh, desired your desired network that is the backbone network so user is uh, only mobile locally but it's not mobile at the network layer so uh, you are moving from one location to another location but there is uh, no change at the network layer which uh, include the router so sometimes there may be the shutdown between uh, changes access network host get new access point at the new access network that you uh, totally change your position and then onward your connectivity will restart. Uh, let me also explain it a little bit on the uh, whiteboard. So if you have a look, we have a node that is host one and uh, it is connected here with this access point. And uh, now we have another access point over here and the the underlying network or the backbone remain the same. So now if this node is, for example, in the first environment, if this node is moving in this area, either here, either it move here in this direction. So look at this, the node is moving from location A to B, B to C and C to D. But uh, the connectivity of the access point remain 
with the excess point one. So there is no change at all. Even the first point of connectivity remain the same. But if this host want to move over here and he is now here, then in this case, only the excess point is different. This is host one, H1, the, the connectivity is provided by access point two. But if you have a look to the underlying network, then the switch, the switch and the router uh, and the other servers remain the same. So this is the router you can see over here. So the router and other infrastructure remain the same. Uh, in some cases, there is possibility that this uh, access point access point five, we can say access point five, then the host one is moving from this location to this location over here. He is now coming in this region where the switch and the other infrastructure that is the router is also different. Here, this is the router. Then if you have a look to this diagram, then in this case, this is case two, the node is mobile at data link layer that include the switch and the network layer. The node is changing its router as well as changing the switch. Here in this case, the node is neither changing its access point, neither the switch, nor the router. Here in this case, the node is changing its access point, but not the switch and the router that is the backbone network. So now moving back toward uh, the slide. <clears throat> so here you can see that surfing the net while driving in a car or flying on a plane. So you maintain a connection uh, with the network while you are changing your network. And there is need to ensure traffic uh, continue to reach the host. And this is the responsibility um, of the network. And this is also a sign of a reliable connectivity that how much your connection is reliable and uh, your service is uh, still uh, very good though you are changing your position over here. Here you can say that you can maintain the ongoing transfer to the uh, receiver node and the seamless transmission <coughs> of this node from uh, one station to another station. Uh, look at this diagram. We have a rider uh, that is connected with the router A, and then onward he is moving uh, to another router that is router B. So in this situation, uh, the, the network layer uh, is involved uh, and uh, the node is mobile on network layer as well because the routers are changing over here. So now here, once the node move, the car rider moves from location A to B, now the connectivity will be provided with the router B. And this is the responsibility of the network that he should track this user and provide the required connectivity with the required devices. Now, how we can keep uh, tracking of uh, any mobile node? Uh, this is actually explained with the help of an example that you have a friend who is moving uh, from one location to another location, or he has a, a job like that he continuously uh, move from one location to another location. So for example, uh, if you want to send a letter to your friend, then first you have to recognize and identify his position that where he stay uh, or where he is, there may be multiple locations, uh, either he is uh, traveling somewhere, he is in the hostel, he is in, uh, in his house, he is staying with some friend uh, and so on. So let's start with the first point that sending a letter to a friend who moves often, so how do you know where to reach him? So look at this, this is the important thing that you want to reach your friend uh, by uh, some mean, so you can deliver your letter or your message to your friend. So in option one, have him update you. Either the user by itself share those information with you 
or uh, uh, that what will be his uh, next destination or new location. The friend contact you on each move, so you will mail him directly. The, the, the friend uh, actually share his information before moving to the next location and then onward you target the same location to deliver your important mail. Option two is that you can also ask his parent when needed. And whoever he, in this case, the parent house is actually the home station. The parents serve as a permanent address in this situation and they can forward your letter to him or they can update you about uh, his location and then onward you can deliver your message, <clears throat> your uh, letter to your friend as per your requirement. So now moving uh, to next slide and you can see here in this uh, figure are in this image that the person is on airport and he's traveling and you don't know about that what will be his next destination. <clears throat> now letting the routing protocol handle this process and uh, as we discussed in the last slide <clears throat> that a car rider is moving from one uh, router to another router and then his connectivity is actually his connectivity is actually changed at network level. Here you can see that the routing protocol actually take this responsibility that uh, uh, the mobile node, which is moving uh, from one network to another network, then it ensure uh, all the resources and services should be available there on that uh, network. So the mobile node, which has a single persistent address here in this case, the IP address. And the, this address is actually injected in uh, the routing protocol. So the protocol here is, uh, for example, OSPF, which is Open Shortest Path First Protocol. This is uh, used to take this responsibility and the procedure will remain the same here. The mobile host with IP address is 12.34.45.0. Uh, uh, and then onward, if you can have a look that the mobile node is moving over here, the, with the address is 12.34.45.7. Uh, so uh, now the connectivity is provided by router B to the host which is uh, now getting services and the IP address is also changed as per the uh, available uh, protocol or the available addresses uh, over there. Here is an example of uh, Boeing services while you are traveling uh, from one location to another location through any aeroplane. Uh, so in uh, Boeing uh, aeroplane, we have actually uh, the internet services uh, from satellite. So the plane by itself uh, have the capability to provide their services and there is uh, an access point which is connected with the satellite. So the Boeing provide mobile internet service and the Wi-Fi hotspot is actually established at a very uh, high almost 35,000 feet. And uh, the travel speed of the plane is also uh, about 600 miles per hour. Now, over there, as I told you that uh, for that purpose, the communication link is established with the satellite. Uh, antenna on the plane uh, is to lease satellite transponders and the ground station actually served as the gateway. So it is responsibility of uh, the closest satellite with that Boeing plane to provide the services. Uh, over here, one important protocol that we are using is the BGP protocol that is border gateway routing protocol, which is used for uh, mobility. There is a set of block IP addresses. For example, if there are 500 users, then uh, the required IP will be 
between 500 to 600 and so on. And similarly, the BGP actually provide the service that they can communicate or they can transfer their data to the ground services over there uh, across the border. Here you can see, for example, this uh, plane is connected with this satellite and uh, the satellite is connected with the ground station and the ground station is connected through fiber optic with the destination computer. Now, while moving this plane from this satellite to the next one, satellite number two, once it comes in its service area, then the connectivity is provided by uh, provided by the satellite number two. Here you can see, and now onward, the satellite number two actually send the signal from aeroplane to the ground station, and the ground station transfer data to the destination node via the fiber optic. Remember, this network is a fiber-based network. So some important uh, points about it is that there is no change uh, to the end host. The end host remain the same. Only the, the middle layer structure or the middle layer uh, equipments or devices are changed. And for example, you can see here in the last example, the sender and destination remain the same, but the first point of connectivity and then the router and the switches that through which the data was uh, passing earlier is no more there. Earlier, they have that satellite and the ground station, and now he is uh, uh, transferring or communicating through some other satellite and ground station with the desired destination. So the sender and the destination node remain the same. Similarly, the traffic follows an efficient path as well for the new location. As we discussed that uh, OSPF protocol uh, may follow the shortest path to transfer your data. There are some disadvantages sometimes, uh, and that may be because of uh, the large number of mobile nodes as the number of nodes uh, increases. So similarly, the challenges uh, increase as well. Large number of routing protocol messages while they are continuously changing their location. And so definitely the update is required over there. Uh, larger routing protocols, and uh, uh, routing tables uh, that is actually uh, the outcome of these routing protocol. And these routing protocol actually works on the routing table. They store small address block and the updation of these routing protocol is also very mandatory in this situation. Uh, Sometimes uh, there may be a possibility that you have uh, older entry inside the routing table, which may misguide the whole system inside the network. So th this is very necessary that as far as the node is mobile and he's changing his position, then we should update the routing protocol. It is again responsibility of the routing protocol to update this routing table as soon as the, uh, the node changes its location. Another approach is the alternative mobile IP address. And uh, we will also discuss that how this mobile IP address works. Uh, so one important thing you can see here that uh, now the network is divided into uh, two part, the home network and uh, the home agent. Uh, actually the home uh, agent is uh, that particular unit with which the node is connected. Uh, let me give you an example over here that, for example, if you are in the United States, uh, this is uh, the region you are in the United States. And for example, if uh, your cell phone is over there, and it's moving uh, here and there, or you have uh, the T-Mobile the service over there, then you can move anywhere in the United States. Either you are going to DC, you are, you, you are staying at uh, Kansas City, you are moving to DC, uh, you are moving to New York, you are moving to uh, any other state maybe, uh, 
LA, and so on. So, so you don't need uh, to uh, to change uh, anything. Any address is required, or any help is required, because the the mobile services of T-Mobile is available across the U.S. and wherever you are moving, mm, uh, there's no need to change uh, your uh, your address. Uh, so the first and for example, if you have a, a T-Mobile service, so this is actually your home network. And now onward, for example, you are moving from US to UK, then definitely uh, the days you will spend in UK, you will be on a visitor network. So this is actually the visitor network where you are staying for some time and uh, the mobile operator for example over there in uk we have the vodafone network so over there the vodafone network will identify your cell phone and will also send you a message that welcome to london and uh, you can provide uh, we can provide you our services with this much charges for example if you want to send uh, SMS, if you want to call, if you want to use the uh, internet services, then this, these are the charges that you can use our service. Look at this. This is actually the case in which you are getting, uh, you are using the SIM card that was issued by T-Mobile. And T-Mobile have signed some agreement with the Vodafone. So once this agreement is signed, then it means that they will also provide uh, services to the users of T-Mobile in London. And similarly, if someone is going from UK to United States, then it will be the responsibility of T-Mobile to provide services to the Vodafone user over here. But here, the Vodafone user, if he's coming here to DC, then he will be considered as a visitor. Remember, we have uh, some registers that is the uh, home location register, HLR, and we have visitor location register, VLR, and we have equipment identity register that is EIR, in which the information is saved about the e IMEI number of a cell phone. So for you people, the T-Mobile US Kansas City will be the home station. So that's why your entry will be an HLR. While you move here to London for some business trip, then your, your entry will be in the VLR, that is the visitor identity register. And they, they will definitely confirm your status from home location as well. That either this user is allowed to use this service, he has enough uh, amount uh, in his account that he can use this service or not. So let's start with the slide here. You can see that uh, here is the node which provides service and here is the permanent address of uh, uh, this node. The address in home network can always be used to reach the mobile phone. And that is 128.119.40.186. Similarly, the home network permanent home address is again 119.40. And uh, over here, this is the home agent which is providing a service. Or you can say this is the first point of uh, connectivity. The home agent entity that will perform mobility function on behalf of mobile node when mobile is remote. So if you are taking uh, the example, as we discussed earlier, this is United States and Kansas City, and uh, you, this is your node and the router with which you are directly connected will be the home agent in this situation. Similarly, the permanent address will be the IP address or the number issued to you by the T-Mobile in that particular city. Uh, similarly, this is the correspondent who actually want to communicate with you. So this node actually uh, want to communicate uh, with you. And uh, first of all, what he will do, he will contact your home network for this purpose. Uh, here is the visitor network. For example, this is the London, the United Kingdom visitor network, the network in which mobile is currently 
uh, reside or he is here on a business trip to London. Similarly, the permanent address, look at this, will remain the same. This is your permanent address and this is the temporary address. Similarly, this is the care of address, address in the visited network. So this is 79.129.13.2. And look at this, it belongs to this network. So a temporary address is actually assigned to you. That is the care of address. And behind this address, 79, you have the permanent address. So for, for example, uh, on this network in the United Kingdom, you will be identified on this address, but behind this uh, address, you have the actual permanent address, which will be used to identify you. Here, if you can have uh, a look to the router, which is the first point of connectivity for you in London, is the foreign agent. Over there, we have the home agent. This router is the home agent. You can see here, this is the home agent, and this router is actually considered as the foreign agent. And this is responsible uh, in visited network, and it will take care of all the mobility function on uh, behalf of this mobile node. So now uh, look at this first, the registration mechanism, you moved from uh, US to UK, London, and uh, you actually requested uh, for services to that particular network like Vodafone. So the first thing is that mobile contact the foreign agent on entering the visited network. So you are requesting that I have a, mo uh, a, a T mobile SIM card then I need services in London through the same SIM card. So now uh, in first step, you're requesting the foreign agent and the foreign agent is contacting your home agent. As I told you earlier that they have signed a contract or agreement that they will provide services to each other in their countries. So in step two, you can see over here that foreign agent contact home agent and this, that this mobile is resident in my network. So one important thing is that your location is also transferred to the home agent. Uh, sometime if the investigation agency need your location, then they uh, know about uh, your, uh, your location from the services or the mobile services you are using because the visitor location, a visitor agent always contact the home agent that either this user is a legitimate user, he have enough uh, amount in uh, his account, either he's registered or subscribed for this, this, this service and so on, all those things are, uh, are confirmed from the home, home agent. So foreign agent knows about the mobile and home agent knows about the uh, location of mobile. So now the foreign agent know about this node that this is a legitimate user. He has subscription for all these services for which he uh, requested. And similarly, he have a clear account and uh, he have enough amount in his account that he is eligible to use this service. Similarly, the home agent actually gets information that this user is now in London and he is requesting a service from there. So, so this is actually the registration process. And now if we have a look while you are mobile, then there is indirect routing in which the home agent is involved. Now the correspondent is somewhere in uh, uh, South Asia. For example, if uh, the correspondent is here in uh, Abu Dhabi or in Dubai, and he want to send a message. So for example, a correspondent address packet using home address of the mobile, which is Kansas City, United States. So the correspondent will transfer the request to the home agent. Here in this case is the router reside in Kansas City. And look at this, now the home agent actually know that you are abroad and uh, he also know the foreign agent in this situation. So that's why home agent will insert, intercept the packet and forward it to the foreign agent in London. So now you are uh, receiving your data through foreign agent or visitor uh, in the visitor network. And now here 
This is responsibility of the foreign agent that it should deliver your data to the uh, destination node. So now you have two identities. One is the, I, the address that is assigned by this uh, foreign agent to you to identify you on this network. And one address you got is from home network that is your permanent address. So now he will check in the table that this address belongs to whom and will finally transfer data to you. And now onward, if you uh, have a look, the connection is established directly uh, with the correspondent. So the mobile phone, once receive the message, he will directly contact to this node, the, the sender node, and then uh, correspondent will receive uh, the message. Now, there are two <clears throat> important addresses. As I told you earlier, the two important addresses are used. Uh, in indirect routing, if you have a look, we have some efficiency issues. And the reason behind that is that first, uh, correspondent is contacting the home agent and then home agent transfer data to the foreign agent and then foreign agent transfer it to the destination node and then the destination node transfer uh, the his required information or the response for that query to the correspondent directly. Uh, so we have uh, a bit inefficiency because of this triangle that correspondent to the home agent and then home agent to visitor agent and then back to the correspondent. So we, we should make this uh, uh, process a bit efficient and make it direct. We had discussion about permanent address and care of address. As I told you that one address is used through which you will be identified across the globe. That is your permanent address that was issued by T-Mobile are uh, the service provider in the Kansas City, United States. Another one is care of address. If you are in UK, then the service provider over there will issue you a temporary address. So this is used by the home agent to forward data ground to the mobile. For example, if you are moving uh, to uh, Germany in Berlin, then over there we have different type of service like O2 mobile services are available there. Then you will have another care of address that will be issued by O2 as Vodafone is uh, issuing this address in London. So you will have a new address in Germany from O2, but your permanent address will remain the same that is, that is issued by T-Mobile in the Kansas City. So now mobile may perform the foreign agent function and therefore this triangle routing is uh, a bit inefficient. There is the correspondent and the mobile node are in the same network. Then there is uh, uh, a point that we can skip once we know about the location uh, of the node, then we can establish a direct connectivity between these nodes. So here is another important thing that mobility why direct routing. And you can see here that once we receive information about the user, and this is the same that we ask from uh, parents of this user that where the, uh, the, uh, the desired destination or where my friend is, and your parent told you about his uh, uh, destination, uh, where he is now, and then you directly connect to that particular destination. So here you can see the same thing. We have the home network. The correspondent requests the home agent and then onward the home agent share in process to share the foreign address of the mobile node. Once the foreign agent uh, address is received by the correspondent, then correspondent forward its message directly in point number three to the foreign agent. And when the foreign agent received this packet or this message from the correspondent, it directly delivered to the uh, destination node in the visited network and the visited network in point five reply directly to the correspondent. So only if you have a look, the home network or the home agent is involved uh, up to some extent that they provide the necessary information are address of the foreign agent. Once the correspondent received the foreign agent address, then he directly connected 
are uh, contacted the foreign agent and then onward the information is delivered to the desired destination. So there is no longer transparent to the correspondent and that's why it is important that now they are directly connected, there is no triangle and such type of communication is much more faster as compared to the indirect communication. Uh, here are some impact of uh, mobility on higher layer. You should know that wireless and mobility change path priority and therefore uh, there is a lot of packet loss uh, and sometime uh, there may be collision between packets and a certain disruption and which may affect the uh, RTT, which is the round trip time. So, so let me explain a, a little bit here about the um, RTT. Uh, for example, this is node A and this is node V. And uh, you want to move from node A to node V and uh, it takes uh, five minutes. And now you are moving from node B to node A or point A to point B and it takes six minutes. Maybe the node is congested. We already had discussion about uh, delay, latency, and uh, jitter. So this is actually the RTT. And RTT, in this case, is 5 plus 6 is equal to 11. And uh, this RTT is round trip time. So once you have the round trip from node A to B and then from B to A, this is the round trip. So that's why it is important to know about that RTT is the round trip which is uh, directly affected because of the mobility of these nodes. Another important thing is the logical impact, the best effort service and this model is normally used similarly for uh, connectivity or data delivery, a transport layer, TCP and UDP protocol uh, can be used. Uh, but we actually know that the performance uh, is definitely affected because of the mobility of these nodes. Therefore, there is some challenges at transport layer as well. When you uh, have continuous disruption, uh, there is congestion, there is packet loss, then the TCP have uh, some behavior uh, that is uh, actually there uh, since its development, that TCP treat the packet loss as a sign of congestion. So for example, if there is any packet loss, maybe there is no congestion, but there, the node move from one location to another location. Therefore, the packet distance to the older location uh, will not be received by the destination node. So definitely those packets will be lost and uh, the TCP will consider that as a congestion and will try to reestablish the connection. TCP similarly try to eliminate the RTT round trip to drive retransmission. And similarly, there's involvement of retransmission, the possibility that the node may receive the same uh, uh, the same packets multiple time. And uh, TCP similarly doesn't perform well under out of order packets. Uh, this is a very important thing that you have uh, in order delivery for uh, efficiency. Uh, out of order delivery uh, is uh, there sometime when the packet is lost, or there's congestion, or there's disruption in the communication, while TCP at the destination si uh, side will process the data in one order. So out of order delivery is also uh, possible in some situation. Uh, however, if you have a look, internet was actually not designed earlier uh, while keeping these things uh, in mind. Therefore, we should conclude in this uh, chapter that wireless already a major way uh, and providing connectivity and services to the user. Uh, mobility is also a very important thing and uh, uh, there are definitely there is need to develop more protocols that they can 
provide our uh, uh, reliable connectivity while you are moving from one location to another location. You may also feel uh, the, the, the breakage in service while you are using GSM, but it's much more covered in 4G and 5G networks. Uh, there are some challenges that uh, to design the network protocol. As you know, that wireless break the uh, links uh, because of the mobility, then the, there is a uh, uh, need to provide higher layer, more protocol, uh, which uh, should perform very well. Let me explain a little bit here about the out of order delivery and in order delivery here. Uh, for example, this is node one and this is node B. And uh, he wants to send uh, data to to destination node B. This is packet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, there is route, we already had discussion about it. Here are some routers between these nodes and he is transferring this data in the same order, five, six, and seven. But over here, packet number three is dropped or destroyed, three, and then onward packet number five is destroyed. So now when you receive data over here, it will be in the form of one, then two, three will be missing, then four, then five will be missing, then six, and then seven. So there is possibility that TCP requests for retransmission of these data and then onward, these packets will be received at the end. So if you have a look to this uh, data received at destination, this delivery is out of order, out of order. And now it is responsibility of the destination node. This is the destination node that first organize this data or bring this data into order make it in order first and then to process it. So this is actually the main mechanism that how out of order data is delivered to the destination. So this is the end of our today's lecture. Uh, and that's why there's uh, still research going on in wireless and ad hoc networks that uh, new protocols uh, should be designed on upper layer as well as uh, for uh, on lower layer that should handle this mobility uh, efficiently and uh, the reliable services should be provided to the user which are traveling are moving from and changing its location continuously. So that's it uh, from today's class. And if you have any question, you can write me. Uh, thank you so much and uh, take care.